Good morning. Thank you for joining us today for the release of our report on the use of segregation in Ontario correctional facilities. Our investigation has found serious problems with the use of segregation in Ontario. The first problem is that the ministry does not operate under a clear definition for segregation. So whether someone is even considered to be in segregation depends on which definition is being used. Une grande partie de la confusion suscitée par la définition de l'isolement en Ontario provient du fait que la politique ministérielle conçoit l'isolement comme un lieu physique et non les conditions de confinement. Another problem is that the way the Ministry of Community Safety and Correctional Services tracks the admission and detention of inmates in segregation. Information on inmates segregation is often entered incorrectly. Inputting incorrect start and end dates, using incorrect date formats, or restarting the clock when an inmate is transferred to another facility makes it impossible to know who is in segregation and for how long. Le ministère n'a pas instauré de système efficace pour faire le suivi des détenus placés en isolement. Quand le processus de suivi ministériel fait défaut, des détenus peuvent tomber entre les mailles du filet et être maintenus en isolement sans que les hauts responsables n'en aient connaissance. Thirdly, the reviews that are supposed to occur at specified intervals aren't done as they're supposed to be. I know many of you are familiar with the story on the first page of today's report, Adam Capet a young man who spent four years in solitary confinement while awaiting a trial that still has yet to happen. Adam's story made the news last fall because four years in segregation is shocking in itself. It's almost unimaginable. But what was even more shocking was that the ministry responsible for safeguarding the human rights of the incarcerated did not know about it. As far as the ministry was concerned, he was out of sight and therefore out of mind. Even though it has an oversight structure in place where every single placement of every inmate in segregation is supposed to be reviewed and reported on, the ministry had no idea that Adam had languished in solitary for so long. The ministry's unreliable records at the time showed that he had been in segregation for 50 days when the real total was 1,591 days. But as my report points out, Adam's case, while extreme, is not unique. The ministry has been aware of these problems for years. My office receives thousands of complaints from inmates every year. And we have alerted the ministry to numerous cases where inmates were in segregation too long without the required reviews, and we helped many of these individuals. But the systemic problems remained, and complaints about segregation kept rising. Last spring, the ministry held consultations on segregation and I made several recommendations to restrict the practice and strengthen oversight. The ministry pledged to do more still, but there was little concrete change. After Adam Capet's case came to light, and with the volume of complaints that we were seeing, I knew it was time to start preparing for a systemic investigation. Given our decades of experience in overseeing the Ontario correction system and the data we already had to build on, we were uniquely suited to investigate the use of segregation in Ontario correctional facilities. Shortly thereafter, the Ministry appointed an independent reviewer, Mr. Howard Sapers. I, of course, welcome the appointment of Mr. Sapers. You can never have too many people tackling problems as daunting as this, and the Ministry could not have picked a more qualified or insightful expert to conduct that review. I said at the outset that our work would complement that of Mr. Sapers who was working under some tight timelines and with fewer resources than we have, and so we kept him abreast of our findings. It's important to remember that solitary confinement, locking someone up for up to 22 hours a day and depriving them of all human contact, is a severe form of punishment that can have grave and lasting effects on a person's mental state. To quote inmate Linda from our report, who spent more than 60 days in segregation before we intervened, and a more appropriate placement was found for her, I quote, the door is made of iron. When it slams shut, it kills you psychologically. Who can tolerate being locked up in a tiny space and not lose their sanity? 
This is why the United Nations considers prolonged solitary confinement to be cruel and inhumane and recommends placements never exceed 15 days. This is why in Ontario it is meant to be used as an absolute last resort. And even then it must be justified, reviewed, and reported on to the most senior levels of the ministry. My, my investigation found that the reality falls short of this obligation. Many inmates are in segregation because they have mental illnesses or developmental disabilities, and correctional staff feel they have no other way to house them. The system for recording and tracking data on inmates is cumbersome, outdated, and prone to errors. Tracking goes off the rails when inmates are transferred between institutions. Oversight at the senior level often amounts to a rubber stamp. It's high time for real practical change. We have seen over the years that the ministry can make change when it takes issues seriously. The ministry's response to this report has been encouraging. It has agreed to address all of the recommendations and has taken action on several of them already. The solutions that I have proposed will not only benefit inmates in Ontario jails. They will provide clarity and streamline the work of correctional staff and ministry officials and bring greater transparency to a system that has been out of public sight for much too long. Je suis encouragé par les efforts que fait le ministère pour améliorer le suivi et l'examen des placements en isolement et par sa réponse positive à mon rapport. So I am encouraged by the ministry's efforts to improve tracking and the review of segregation placements and by its positive response to my report. We will carefully monitor the progress in implementing my recommendations as we always do. And I'd be happy now to answer any questions you may have. Who is it that there's no clear or standard definition for segregation? And are you proposing any type of definition? Yourself? We're not proposing a specific definition. We're just asking that the ministry come up with one that changes the focus from um, the place rather than to the conditions of confinement. Um, I don't know where that definition originated, but uh, most other jurisdictions have a definition that talk that speaks to the conditions of um, of confinement not not the place and why is it important that it be in the legislation well i think because it needs to be in legislation to be followed um, we've seen uh, throughout our our history with the with the correctional world is that um, if things are not legislated um, they're not adhered to as they should be understand correctly, you investigated in four uh, correctional institutions, right? That's correct. Is it possible that this problem could be a lot um, more, I guess, ingrained than, than what you've seen? Well, I think we d what we did is we, we selected four institutions to give us a really good cross-section of the correctional facilities in Ontario um, in terms of size, in terms of geographic location, and one was a correctional facility for women. So I think it gave us a good sense. It was a good sample size. Um, you know, you, you can't always uh, sample to perfection, but uh, we're pretty confident that that gave us a good cross-section of what's going on in Ontario. I think you called Adam Capet's case uh, the longest known placement. I mean, is it possible that there is someone who has been in solitary confinement for longer? It's possible, given the given the track record, uh, track record or the, the counting that the ministry does in the, um, the, the, the faulty system for tracking and, and oversight, it's possible. Are you recommending that um, some correctional officers felt that they had no other option? Um, how will this change that if, if they feel that solitary confinement was, was the only thing they could do and we better define it? What changes there? Sure. Well, one of the things I've heard from correctional officers is that um, they lack training and they lack the resources and they lack the options. And, you know, it, it has to be underscored that uh, solitary confinement is supposed to be an absolute last resort. And that's not what, what is happening. And some of the correctional staff that I've spoken to uh, feel overwhelmed with having to deal with, with mental health issues that they're not qualified to deal with. And so they put people in solitary confinement, not as a last resort, but as, a, as an administrative option. And so th we're trying to make that change. En français, est-ce qu'on a les ressources, vous croyez, pour uh, mieux surveiller l'isolement des détenus en Ontario? Je pense qu'une grande partie des améliorations peuvent être faites sans, euh, sans une grande contribution de, de ressources. Euh, on parle de technologie, juste euh, le fait d'optimiser euh, ou maximiser la technologie qui est déjà en place pour compter, pour, euh, pour faire le suivi des détenus, euh, sera une grande, grande amélioration. Euh, mais je ne serais pas étonné de voir que le ministère euh, euh, 
consacre davantage de ressources à ce problème. Qu'est-ce que vous voudriez voir, justement, concrètement, de la part du ministère? Bien, déjà, nous avons reçu une réponse favorable que le ministère euh, va accepter et mettre en œuvre la plupart de mes recommandations. Donc, ça, c'est déjà positif et euh, je pense qu'il y a une, une reconnaissance du problème maintenant. Et euh, déjà, nous avons vu des, des changements concrets, euh, que ce soit euh, la formation, que ce soit euh, une optimisation de la technologie. Euh, il y a déjà des mesures qui ont été mises en place. Donc, c'est très encourageant. Une dernière question. Dans votre rapport, vous parlez d'isolement. Vous dites que ce serait bien que l'isolement soit clairement défini, qu'il soit strictement limité aussi. Qu'est-ce que vous entendez par, euh, par ça? Bien, nous avons fait une soumission au ministère au mois de mai, puis euh, nous avons, à cette époque-là, euh, suivi les recommandations des Na Nations unies pour euh, bannir l'isolement pour une durée plus que 15 jours. Donc, on demande au ministère de, de revoir non seulement les recommandations dans ce rapport, mais les recommandations que nous avons faites dans le, la soumission aussi. Do you have a recommendation for disciplinary measures that could be used for inmates that, that actually cause and execute some of the most heinous crimes? For example, murdering a cellmate. Because we know at Toronto South, uh, COs there were very reluctant to keep an inmate uh, in solitary confinement for as many as 15 days because the rules just didn't seem clear. So what it would be the best measure to take for situations like that? So we're not saying that segregation will never happen or should never happen. We're saying it should be an absolute last resort and that uh, correctional uh, staff and correctional facilities should have other options and that it should not go on indefinitely. I mean, at the end of the day, people who are incarcerated uh, will most likely return to society. So the idea is to rehabilitate them and not to break them. And what we've seen with segregation is that uh, it just has a devastating impact on people's psyche. And uh, I think that if you don't have a mental illness going into segregation, you've got a good chance of having one by the time you get out. What so do you have a recommendation then for disciplinary measures that could be taken for things such as murder well, we're and Well, we're, we're asking the ministry to explore all those options in, you know, different types of um, segregation from the general population, um, step-down units, that kind of thing. Those, those are all being explored and, 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 and tried in some institutions already. Yes. What do you do about those, <clears throat> the vast majority of uh, inmates in SEG who are there at their own request or for their own security? What do you do about those guys? Well, alternative housing is, is going to have to be developed. I think that even though a large number of inmates ask to be kept out of the general population, they're not asking for a lot of the conditions that they find in segregation. Nobody's asking to have the lights on for 24 hours a day. Nobody's asking to be denied access to, to medical attention, that type of thing. Some of the things that we see happening in segregation. So um, yeah, the ministry is going to have to explore other options for housing. And just because somebody wants to be removed from the general population doesn't mean they can't be with other people in a similar situation. So it depends on the situation. I think you point out yourself that uh, we've seen this sort of story and this report many times in the past, both provincially and federally, and federally is not your jurisdiction, but nothing changes at the end of the day. We still, you know, we had Ashley Smith how many years ago, the same sort of thing, people being palmed off from one cell to another, the, the, the ghost training and all of this sort of stuff. Why will this one have any difference? Right? Well, um, I'm hopeful that uh, the ministry is acknowledging the the dire circumstances that are happening in, in correctional facilities. I, I sense a willingness to change. Uh, the fact that they um, have accepted our recommendations. Um, but uh, you're right, I, I think the time for study and consultation, once Mr. Saper's final report is in, uh, the time for study and consultation is over. It's time to act on this. It's, it's been going on for too long. Is this a funding problem? In other words, is it easier to put a person in crisis into a, a, a box than to deal with the uh, emotional or whatever crisis is occurring? I, I, I'd be reluctant to say it's just a funding problem. Uh, there's training. I've spoken to many correctional officers in, in the last year uh, who tell me that, um, yeah, some of it has to re do with resources, but a lot of it has to do with options. And, uh, for example, losing track of inmates, you know, just by optimizing some of the systems that are already in place, some of the technology that's already in place, they can keep better track of inmates and they don't have to go missing uh, within the system. So.
probably some, some additional resources will be helpful, but a lot can be done, I think, with, uh, by optimizing what is already in place, coming up with definitions, coming up with uh, rules and procedures for oversight that um, we'll be using the people already in place. On ne propose pas de définition. On laisse au ministère de développer sa propre définition. Croyez-vous que c'est justement pas euh, dangereux de laisser au ministère le libre loisir de, de développer sa propre définition? Bien, c'est typique pour un ombudsman de recommander qu'un problème soit résolu sans euh, préciser la, la, la réponse appropriée. Euh, je pense que le ministère est bien placé de consulter euh, d'autres juridictions et, et de développer sa propre euh, définition. Well, so they've already started taking action on, on some things, and they've they've started optimizing the technology and the uh, you know the computer systems for counting and tracking. So so that's already happening. Um, and one thing we do typically is ask that they report back to us in six months, and they're going to do that. So we'll follow up in six months and see what kind of progress is being made. And we will continue to monitor this um, because I think it is a daunting task. Um, it's, you don't transform a system uh, this large and this dysfunctional, frankly, uh, in a short amount of time. So it's going to take some time. This report mainly concerns uh, monitoring, oversight, uh, tracking. Uh, your investigators did have a number of instances here where they actually saw inmates, some in the, one in the disheveled, naked state, that kind of thing. What can you say about the overall conditions of confinement in segregation cells? Cells well, I think I think it varies from one institution to another. Um, you just you can't paint them all with the same brush. Um, you know, we've heard about some some horrendous situations, uh, and then in others we've seen um, situations where actually correctional staff uh, were trying to do their best to to make the conditions as humane as possible. Can you talk a bit about how the panels would work, the review panels? Would they be time consuming? Well, time, so they don't have to be. Um, you know, we just we think it's important that there be some independent oversight, people from the outside that take into account the, the mental state, the physical well-being of these inmates and on a regular basis and, and have that reported up, which was not happening in the past. I think that's the crucial thing. And so uh, it doesn't have to be time consuming, but it's important and needs to be done. I'm sorry if this is laid out, but who would sit on that panel? A, a medical, judicial? Well, that has yet to be determined. We're proposing that they develop these panels, and uh, you know, there, it remains to be seen what they come up with. Yeah. With the death of an inmate in Lindsay in early December, uh, who was in solitary confinement, did you guys look into that at all? We looked into a number of cases, and anything that was reported, we, we took into consideration in our report. We've been monitoring uh, the situation in Ontario for quite some time now. Even uh, before this report, we did the submission last year, so uh, we've been monitoring the situation in uh, of segregation, the conditions of segregation in Ontario for quite some time. Specific on that case, sir. We didn't report any, anything specific. Accountability officers in the province and in the country have called for either a, a cap on solitary durations, which is in the kind of recommended in the Mandela rules, or an elimination of solitary confinement altogether. Where do you stand on those separate recommendations? We have called for a ban on the indefinite use of segregation, so anything more than 15 days in conformity with what the United Nations proposes. And we, we did that back in our submission back in May last year. And after talking to ministry officials, correctional officers, that hasn't changed at all? No, no. Okay, any other further questions? All right, well, thank you very much, everyone.